Here are seven things that I wish I knew before becoming a data scientist. If you click into this video, you're probably wondering if you should become a data scientist or not. Maybe you're about to start a new role, or maybe you're just scared. What if you commit to this field and realize that you have way overhyped the tech industry and you don't actually enjoy the work at all? Well, fear not, I hope that this video can clear up some of your doubts. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Vivian and I have a bachelor's in maths and stats and I have been working in the data science industry here in Sydney, Australia for the past seven years. And there are so, so many things that I wish my younger self knew that might have completely changed my mindset and my career trajectory. Let's get straight into them right now. So firstly, data science is an extremely ambiguous field and the same job title can mean completely different things between different industries and different companies. Many companies are also jumping on this bandwagon and hiring for data scientists without having the proper quality data foundations ready or even just knowing how to utilize your machine learning models. So my advice for you is when applying for a data science role, make sure to read the job description very carefully and also ask the hiring manager what your key responsibilities and deliverables will be for the first six months of your role to make sure you're not really jumping into something you didn't really want to be doing in the first place. The next thing is a question that I get asked all the time and no, you do not need a master's degree to become a data scientist. When I first started work back in 2016, I really wanted to get a master's in statistics or computer science and I really tore myself up long and hard for not having done any information systems or computer science electives back at university. But now that I am seven years into work and on the other side of the hiring spectrum, I will say that yes, having a master's degree might help you land a job a tad easier or understand your technical concepts slightly better. But ever since COVID happened back in 2020 and the boom of online education, remote learning and AI, there are just so many more pathways into data science that don't require a master's degree. You can go down the self-study approach, do a boot camp in data science, or possibly even transition laterally via a data analyst or data engineer role. You all end up in the same place anyway. Landing a job is really just experience-based now. Your uni credentials do not matter once you are out of university and have that first job experience up your sleeve. So please, please remember to prioritize hands-on experience and learning over getting another degree. All right, moving on to my third point, which is that fancy machine learning models are going to be very little of your day-to-day -day job. A lot of people think, oh, data science, you must be building so many fancy machine learning models all the time. But in reality, modeling is only 10 to 20% of the entire data science lifecycle, and that's only if you're working on a model build. Otherwise, your day-to-day -day is going to be spent supporting pillars across the business and trying to identify areas in which data can better add business value. You will most likely be querying from your data warehouses using SQL to try and extract insights. Which brings me to talk about the sponsor of today's video, LearnSQL.com. If you've watched my videos for a while, I'm sure you've all heard me talk about how important SQL is for any data related role, whether you are a data engineer, a data analyst, data scientist, or just any hybrid role in between. For any of you hoping to touch up on your SQL skills, LearnSQL.com might actually be the perfect alternative for you. They are a completely web-based platform that focuses on explaining SQL concepts via a range of interactive courses ranging from simpler topics like joins and aggregations to more advanced topics like recursive joins, window functions and indexes. Every single function is also explained in depth with the ability to practice your coding real time directly in your web browser. In my favorite part, there are also monthly challenges and practice sets based on real world problems so you can actually play around with practical data that solves a real business problem. And don't worry if you're someone who likes to get something tangible, each course also comes with a certificate that you can pop up on your LinkedIn profile. So no matter where you are in your SQL journey, whether or not you want to analyze marketing data to get some insights into your conversion rates, or you want to learn how to store and optimize data in a relational database, there will be a course on Learn SQL that's perfect for you. So right now they're doing a massive 70% off sale where you can get lifetime access to all of their courses for just $200, which in my opinion is such a steal. Anyway, if you're interested in checking them out, I will have a link down in my description box below. Thank you again to LearnSQL for sponsoring this portion of the video. And let's move on into another juicy topic. How much maths and stats do I really need to know to become a data scientist? So in almost all the roadmaps that I've seen online, many people say maths and stats is basically the first thing that you need to know in order to become a data scientist. And I couldn't disagree more. Yes, knowing the theory is going to help you understand what's happening behind your gradient boosting or linear regression models. You don't need to know that much and it is most definitely not the very first thing that you need to know. 
I spent my entire undergrad degree proving convergence theorems and distributions, and I haven't touched that since the day that I finished my last exam. Obviously, you have to know the basics like hypotheses testing and how to calculate, say, conversion rates, your mean, your variance, and the deviations, but the key is knowing when to apply something and how to actually interpret the output. Honestly, code can do all the calculations for you, and in a world where generative AI and ChatGPT has become the norm, AI can really write all the code for you given the correct prompts. After all, our job as a data scientist is to better add value to our business by going through the data to try and find some actionable insights, and that should be a very exciting, fun process. After all, maths is just problem solving and it should be fun. Now moving on to my fifth point, and probably the most underrated skill for data scientists, communication. I see so many applicants out there sharpening their technical skills like learning new programming languages and machine learning techniques. But the ability to communicate effectively is just as important if not more. Not only does that help you better understand and translate your business problems into data initiatives, it also helps you better collaborate and understand your stakeholders, present your results intuitively and therefore driving real business impact. I often have to remind myself and my team that insights without actions is just noise, and the most successful data scientists are the ones who can drive real business impact through their work. Moving on to yet another juicy topic, salaries. Now when I first started work, I didn't have any friends or family in the industry and I really wasn't sure what salary to be expecting or to negotiate for. Salaries have also been such a taboo topic and I never really understood why, given financial compensation is such an important part of picking a career. I personally can't comment on US salaries, but a good guide as to what to expect in the Australian market here in 2024 is in the Hayes Salary Guide. I will leave a link down to that in my description box below, so feel free to check it out. I am very happy to make a separate video going through some of my career journey and the salaries that I was earning in my previous roles, so let me know down below if that's something that you would like to see. Maybe when we hit 5,000 subscribers, I would do one of those videos. We'll see about that. But in terms of some rough numbers to expect, a data analyst might start at around $100,000, your junior data scientist might come in around $110,000 to $130,000, a more mid-level would be $140,000 to $160,000, whereas any of your lead or manager roles would be at least $170,000 to $190,000. And obviously this depends heavily on the industry and the size of the company that you work in. And my final point, a quick one, all the skills are extremely transferable, so don't worry if you begin as a data scientist and realize that your true passions lie within data engineering or maybe even product management. It is extremely easy to pivot between industries. That is all that I have for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed the seven things that I wish I knew before becoming a data scientist and that this video has kind of helped you make up your decision as to whether or not you want to pursue this career. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let me know down in the comments below what else you would like to see. Thank you again to LearnSQL for sponsoring today's video and as always, I will see you in my next one. Bye!